What's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Cody Campbell with High Ground Gaming and today we have another 60% mechanical gaming keyboard. Today we have the Cooler Master SK622. I'm going to tell you about the specs real quick, then we'll get into the unboxing so you can take a look at it. After that, we'll get into the review section and I'll give you my thoughts on it and from there we'll go to High Ground Gaming's final score. Don't go anywhere. This one's actually pretty exciting because this is the first 60% keyboard that I've seen that has low profile switches. Now, low profile switches are kind of a growing trend right now. I'm seeing them more and more on gaming keyboards. Actually, the Logitech keyboard that I use, which I love, actually has uh, low profile switches and it's fantastic. So I'm pretty excited to give these a try and see how they hold up. The Switch brand, is not listed. They've used Cherry MX switches in the past, but the fact that it just says linear mechanical switch and doesn't have any sort of branding on it makes me think that it's probably not Cherry MX. They would advertise it if they had it. So I don't know if this is an in-house brand, if this is Cooler Master's own brand of switches, or if it's something else, that's something I'm gonna have to look into. But we'll, we'll test them out and let you know whether or not they're good, which is really the only thing that matters. They have advertised on their site that these switches are a 2.0 variant of the ones that were in the 600 series. So they actually have a reduced actuation point. That means that when you tap a key, it's going to interface with the computer a little bit faster, which is, important for gaming, but it's something you always have to keep an eye on with typing. Keyboards with a higher actuation point have a tendency to get a lot of extra typos just from you resting your fingers on them. So that's another thing we'll be checking out, seeing whether that's gonna be an issue or if they're sturdy enough that that doesn't happen too often. These switches are also available in three different kinds. You've got blues, browns, and reds. So all your bases are covered there. They also now have ergonomic keycaps. They didn't say what they're made of, but the keycaps now have a sort of divot or bevel to them. So that means that there's going to be sort of a finger rest in each keypad. That was one of the main complaints about the 600 series keyboards that they came out with was they had all those flat keycaps and there was a lot of typos from people just not being able to feel out individual keys. So this seems like a good step in the right direction. It does have RGB as you can see from the box, which is nice. Uh, it comes in two colors. They sent us the space gray, but they also have a silver with white keycaps. It is wireless, which is nice. It comes with a 4,000 milliamp battery, so that's good. It also has USB type C connectivity. It comes with a USB type C to USB type A cable, which is good for most people. If you prefer, you can always buy a C to C cable and swap that out. And, I think that's it. I think that's pretty much it for the specs. Why don't we go ahead and get into the unboxing? All right, got a couple stickers up here. Every time I think I'm starting to get better at this, one of these boxes throws me. Okay, got a box in the box. All right, here we are. Oh. All right, we've got the Bluetooth setup manual. Cooler Master, make it yours. Seems like that's probably just the regular manual. Ooh, and it's in a nice velvet case. Look at that. Ooh, so fancy. It's like a bottle of Crown Royal. Okay. I think that yellow is just a sticker. I don't think that's actually like part of the coloring. Let's, yeah. Yeah, okay, it's coming off. I was a little concerned because I was not a big fan of that, but uh, there we are. That's very pretty. It's got like a brushed aluminum surface under here. The keycaps look nice. There's a nice matte black to them or space gray, I guess. Let's see, on the back, yes, we have removable feet. Looks like only one size, but that's okay. Some nice snap to them too. And we've got the USB type C port in the dead center back. Little switch on the side, that's probably, uh, ooh, ooh la la. I was gonna say that's probably how you switch it onto wireless mode. Looks like it came pre-charged, that's very pretty. I like that. And what else do we have in here? A 
just the USB Type-C to USB Type-A cable and a keycap remover. So let's take a let's take a look at these keycaps because that's one of the things I'm curious about. It is a little bit tall for a low profile keyboard, but the keycaps themselves are very narrow. So I can see how this is still quite a bit more low profile than some of the other ones we've looked at, which is also probably why you don't need multiple settings for the back feet because it's already so low down. But I personally don't think I'd feel comfortable typing on it flat as is. I'd probably use the feet or I'd still want some sort of wrist rest, maybe both. Let's take a look at what the uh, keys sound like. I'm gonna hold my mic to it. So they did send us one with linear reds. They're pretty nice, uh, very quiet. There's not a big clack at the bottom and there's no sound until it hits the bottom. Uh, not a lot of wobble, tiny bit, tiny bit of wobble on each key, but not a huge amount. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I'm gonna plug it into my computer. I'm gonna play around with it. I'm gonna play some Resident Evil 8. And we'll be back with the review in just one second. Stick around. All right, we're back. As you could tell from my lack of hair, it's been a little while. I have spent some time playing with the Cooler Master SK622 mechanical gaming keyboard, and I have some thoughts on it. But real quick, person who's about to subscribe says, what? Did I get anyone? No? Well, you should, you should do it anyway. Let's talk about the keyboard. We're gonna start by talking about the build quality. First of all, it's got a bit of weight to it. It's not super hefty, but it's not super light either. It feels like it's made of some quality materials when you hold it. It doesn't move around on your desk, which is important. The feet are really good. They stand up really well and hold it in place at a good comfortable incline. The rubber feet at the bottom as well keep it from sliding around. One thing I wanna talk about that I didn't really talk about before was the layout of the buttons. So every 60% keyboard that I've seen is a little bit different in how they do things. One of the things that I got really excited about when I saw this was that this actually has the arrow keys right on the primary layout of the keyboard. Most of them you have to hit the function key in order to activate the arrows. So I got really excited when I saw these because I use arrow keys all the time. And even though they're not super important for gaming, having them right on the face was really convenient for a keyboard because odds are you probably use your computer for more than gaming. But I didn't realize that this comes at a cost. These four arrow keys here make it so that the shift key is the size of a regular letter button. Usually a shift key would take up all three of these spaces. Now, for gaming, that right side shift key isn't all that important. You mostly use this one over here. But for productivity, for typing, you probably are gonna end up using this one a lot and not having it be the full size. I ended up hitting the up arrow key when I was trying to hit the shift key about a hundred times a day. And it was driving me insane. I'm sure a lot of you would be able to adapt to that in time. But for me in the two plus weeks that I used this, it was just, it was infuriating. So for me, that was a big, big negative. I have to say that the keycaps themselves are really nice though. The addition of the uh, concave or convex, I'm not sure which, keycaps was a really smart move on Cooler Master's part. These are much nicer and they have a really nice texture to them. I'm not quite sure what they are because they don't really feel like PBT or ABS plastic. They feel really good though, and they're a nice matte black, and they didn't develop any kind of shine or anything like that in the time that I was using them. So plus one for keycap quality. I did notice, however, that they're not quite as low profile as I expected. I mentioned in the early part of the video that yeah, they are a bit lower than the average keyboard. And so if you're looking for a low profile 60% keyboard, this might be your only option. I'm not sure if there are any other low profile 60% keyboards. I know that there are some TKL ones and there's plenty of full size ones, but I don't know if there are any gaming 60% low profile mechanical gaming keyboards. It's a pretty tight niche, but I do have to say that compared to my Logitech, this is not very low profile at all. So don't buy this if you hear the words low profile and you're expecting something akin to 
the Logitech G815 or like a Mac Magic keyboard. It's just not that slim. So I popped off a couple of the keycaps and I took a look at the switches underneath and found out that they are TTC switches. These are okay. The old version of this, the SK621, the one with the flat keycaps, had Cherry MX switches. I think the switch to TTC switches was a downgrade, to be perfectly honest. These do not have a lot of resistance. They don't have a lot of tension when you push down on them. They're very easy to drop, which makes it very easy to do typos with them. They do have the higher actuation point, which again makes it easy to do typos with them. So if you have very light fingers and you want something for gaming where you're just gonna get that stroke as quickly as possible, then this might be a great option for you. I like tension in my switches and having a very loose tension was something that I didn't really enjoy personally. That's a matter of personal preference though. So I'm not gonna say that the TTC switches are bad. I'm just gonna say they're not really for me. And to be honest, since Cherry MX is kind of the standard that most people judge by, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's probably not for most people. If you've used Cherry MX and you feel like there's too much resistance and they're too tight, then this might be a solid option for you. I would definitely make sure you try out a couple of them and maybe compare it to this in a store if you could, if you're unsure about it. But if you're just gonna buy online and you've never tried any sort of mechanical switch, I don't know that I'd take a chance on these. It does have a uh, control software. It actually uses the Master Plus software from Cooler Master, which you can use to control pretty much all of your Cooler Master peripherals. If you've got anything from Cooler Master, keyboards, mice, anything like that, if you've got a cooling system, a CPU cooling system, or a Cooler Master case, this software is probably gonna control the lighting for everything. So that's kind of nice. If you're a Cooler Master fan, you've got this all-in-one software where there's just sort of profiles for each individual Cooler Master item that's synced to your PC. The software allows you to control wireless mode. So there's the amount of time before the keyboard goes to sleep when it's in wireless mode. There's the brightness of the RGB when it's in wireless mode. And there's the illuminated ring, which you can turn on or off in wireless mode. Though I have to say, it's the illuminated ring is pretty dim. There's not a lot going on there, so I can't imagine it having a huge power draw either way. But then again, it doesn't do much for you, so there's no point in having it on either. I personally would recommend setting the sleep mode pretty high. I initially set it at the lowest setting, which was five minutes, because I thought anytime I'm going five minutes without touching my keyboard, uh, I'd rather go to sleep mode and save battery. But it takes us a couple seconds to wake up from sleep mode. You have to tap the key and give it a second before it'll start registering keystrokes on your PC. So it got really annoying really quickly at the five minute mark. So I ended up switching it all the way to the other end where it was, I think, half hour. So that way it would only go to sleep if I was really away from my keyboard and not just running in the bathroom or something. The RGB settings are really nice though. The RGB tab gives you access to 18 different lighting modes. It also lets you control the brightness, the speed of the lighting modes, the direction that they flow in, individual colors. The software also gives you key mapping, it gives you macros, it gives you profiles. I did notice that the software only works when it's plugged into the PC though. When I tried to turn it on while it was connected via Bluetooth, my PC kept saying no Cooler Master items detected. So. That was a little odd, but for the most part, it's pretty good control software. But now I wanna talk about what it was like actually using this for gaming. As I mentioned before, I played some Resident Evil with it, and when it was plugged in with the USB-C cable, it was flawless. Everything felt really good gaming. It was an excellent experience. Even though the switches weren't my favorite, it was never uncomfortable or anything like that. I never accidentally pressed a key I didn't mean to. That only really happened for productivity stuff, typing, video editing, stuff like that. It worked about as good as you could possibly want it to. Now, when it connected over the Bluetooth, that was another story. I had 
all kinds of issues with this. First of all, syncing it to Bluetooth is really easy. All you do is uh, hold down the function key and then press either Z, X, or C to map it to one of the three different profiles directly on the keyboard. So your PC can be Z, your phone can be X, and your tablet can be C, and that way you can use it with all three just by swapping between them. Actually using it was a completely different story. I found the performance on this for gaming to be unacceptable. I'd hold down the W key to run forward and it would take a second for him to start and then I'd take my finger off the W key and then he'd keep running for a couple extra seconds. And that wasn't the worst of it even because sometimes I'd take my finger off the W key and he'd just keep running indefinitely. And I'd hit the pause button and it would just cycle through the uh, menu options because it thought that I was still holding the W key down basically until I turned Bluetooth mode off and back on. It was a nightmare, to be honest. I could only tolerate it for a few minutes and then I ended up plugging the USB Type-C cable back in again. I tried this a couple times. I reloaded the game a couple times. I tried different games and I kept having the same issue. So. Unless I got a defective keyboard, I don't think that this thing can really handle wireless gaming. And Resident Evil, while it is a shooter, it isn't even a competitive game. It's not like I was playing CSGO with other players or something like that. And that kind of sucks because there are some wired keyboards like the HyperX Alloy Origin 60 that I reviewed before that are a lot nicer quality than this at the same price. The main thing that this has on those is A, the low profile that isn't all that low, and B, the wireless mode. The fact that you could use this with an Xbox or a PC attached to a television or just sitting far back from your monitor or whatever. Having a wireless mode is kind of one of this thing's main advantages. And so not being able to use that for gaming really hits it hard. So with that in mind, we're going to move on to the verdict. So the Cooler Master SK622 is very feature rich. There's a lot of things that it can do. It just doesn't do some of them very well. And that really sucks. It MSRPs at $99.99. That puts it right in the same field as the Alloy Origin that I mentioned before, as the Annie Pro 2. And it is a bit cheaper than the Razer Huntsman Mini. But it is priced to compete with most other premium 60% mechanical gaming keyboards. This is not a budget option. So it not being able to compete in terms of build quality and wireless performance kind of hits it hard. I'm giving this a 7.3 out of 10. It's a little bit below average. It's got some really cool features that I really like. The software for it is excellent and when it's connected over a usb type c cable the performance would have been a 10 out of 10 it's just the wireless performance really takes it down the shift button is sort of a give and take again that is a personal preference thing because if you can get used to that shift button having the arrow keys could be a big deal but for me i just couldn't do it in two weeks and as i mentioned before though it isn't my preference the switches are not my favorite. So there's a lot of things that are very specific to certain people. You might really like a lot of these features or you might not, but there's no denying that the wireless gaming performance hits this thing hard. So let us know what you think in the comments. Do you think that this is a good keyboard? If you have this, what was the wireless performance like for you? Was it better than my experience or is that kind of par for the course. While you're at it, please give us a like and subscribe. We're a growing channel and every new subscription is a really big deal for us right now. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. Happy gaming.